Yo, it's Joe Marshall here. I've just come back on my YouTube channel just to say climate lockdown changes are coming for 2024. They're repairing it all now, putting cameras up and everything, and you'll see them. I'm just going to play you a little bit of video. This guy explains what's going on. Peace. It's an assault on human liberty. Climate lockdowns. Climate lockdown. And we are just numbers to be moved on a, on a graph, really, and that's really, really frightening. Are people really going to comply with this? Oxford, where the County Council have agreed to trial climate lockdowns in 2024. So have our lockdown-loving politicians gone mad with the idea of indefinite power? Well, I've come here to see what a climate lockdown would look like and how it would affect people's everyday lives. So what does a climate lockdown look like? Well, under Oxfordshire County Council's proposals, residents of Oxford will be split up into six zones or districts. So if you have a car and you want to drive between zones, you can only do that up to 100 times per year. Your car will have to be registered with the council, and if you wish to drive between zones more than 100 times, you'd have to apply for special permission. So if you live in a house where there's more than one car, there's no way to cheat the system. Each house is limited to 100 trips between them. So take a married couple, for example. If they work two separate jobs, that's 50 trips each between the newly proposed districts. I know exactly what you're thinking. Why on earth would anyone want to bring this in? They say it's to ease congestion, lower harmful emissions, and to make Oxford a more sustainable city. Or on the other hand, is it more overreaching government powers being snuck in under the guise of saving the planet? You must be wondering, how on earth could something like this be enforced? Well, Duncan Enright, Oxfordshire County Council's cabinet member for travel and development strategy, said in October that roadblocks will divide the city into six 15 minute neighborhoods. This cute new phrase, 15 minute neighbourhoods, sounds very catchy and innocent and is essentially the idea that you'll have everything within 15 minutes of your home. As you can imagine, the outrage in the city and around the entire country has been immense, with both Oxford City and County Council receiving a barrage of abuse online, meaning they've taken to social media to try and firefight the uproar. On the Oxford City Council's Twitter page, they came out with a series of tweets to clear up some of the supposed confusion or misinformation around the climate lockdowns. Firstly, they don't like the term climate lockdown and are preferring to use traffic filtering system, much more palatable and easier to slip by. In a series of tweets, they claimed that the staff had received extreme abuse, but also that misinformation has also resulted in both councils receiving numerous calls and social media messages from worried residents. Addressing the concerns over physical barriers, they wrote, the traffic filters are not a physical barrier of any kind and will not be physical road closures. They are simply traffic cameras that read number plates. If a vehicle passes through the filter at certain times of the day, the camera will read the number plate and if you don't have an exemption or residence permit, you'll receive a fine in the post. Thank goodness for that. I bet the people of Oxford are relieved to hear that there won't be any physical barriers. However, the council will fine you into poverty if you try to enjoy freedom of movement. Thankfully, they also neatly wrap up this dystopia with some lovely sustainable key words. Our aim is to reduce traffic levels and congestion make the buses faster and more reliable, and make cycling and walking safer and more pleasant. Definitely nothing to do with the World Economic Forum's Agenda 2030 and severely restricting your freedoms. So will Oxford residents be confined to their local area? According to Oxford Council, no. The 15-minute neighbourhoods proposal aims to ensure that every resident has all the essentials, shops, healthcare, parks, within a 15-minute walk from their home. They aim to support and add services, not restrict them. Thankfully, they're clearing that up. For a second there, 
People must have thought they were being forced into an intrusive system that they didn't want, where they'd restrict your freedoms, track your movement, and ultimately fine you into poverty. <laughs> no, you silly goose. This definitely isn't part of digital slavery. Reassuringly, they tell us, under traffic filters, residents will still be able to drive to every part of the city at any time. But in the future, at times when filters are operating, you may need to take a different route if you want to travel by car. So subtly worded, it almost sounds reasonable. Yes, of course you can travel freely, but only when we say. Absolutely, you can travel wherever you want. Only if you take the designated route we allow. Will Oxfordshire residents need permission from the council to travel across the city? No, says Oxford Council. But in the future, Oxford residents will be able to apply for a permit to drive through the filters on up to 100 days per year. So yeah, you'll have to apply to the council for freedom of movement. This next tweet I thought was extremely telling. Have Oxford's councils secretly tried to introduce traffic filters? The proposal for traffic filters was first consulted on in 2019 and then updated in February 2022. Following this update, several months of engagement work was carried out with the stakeholders across the city to inform further updated proposals which were announced in August 2022. A large number of changes were made to the scheme as a result of the consultation, including the introduction of 100-day passes for each resident and reductions in the hours of operation of some filters. I bet the people of Oxford feel at ease knowing their council is kindly allowing them 100 trips between districts instead of none. They continue explaining how they did some minimal outreach which was analysed by an independent research company. And this helped the Oxfordshire County Council's Cabinet meeting on the 29th of November 2022. Essentially, they did some cursory outreach and then quietly voted to bring in the climate lockdowns under the guise of another name, traffic filtering. They concluded their tweets by saying, the scheme will be introduced as a trial, during which an additional consultation will be carried out to further refine the scheme. A final decision will then be made on whether or not the filter should be made permanent. A decision will be made. A decision not by the people of Oxford, but by the select few lockdown-loving politicians. So why Oxford? Well, it has to be trialled somewhere, and perhaps Oxford was the best candidate city. It has a ring road that they want to encourage people to use, and that's a perfect excuse. Oxford's councils are also being run by global warming fanatics from the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party. These politicians love the lockdown, so having them indefinitely must sound like a pretty good idea to these lockdown lovers. And what a more noble cause than saving the planet from global warming. There is of course no denying that what we are seeing now is scarily similar to the Agenda 2030 goals as laid out by the World Economic Forum. The tentacles of the World Economic Forum have reached far and wide in parliaments around the world, but are they now reaching as far as Oxford County Council? Even on the World Economic Forum's website, there is a mention of the 15-minute city, and they conveniently have a map making a restricted existence look appealing. Digitally tracked and surveyed, with your freedoms taken away on the whims of a politician. Doesn't appeal to most. But the question is, is this the framework for the dystopian world the World Economic Forum is striving for? But an even bigger question is, will you comply? This has been Callum Smiles for Rebel News here in Oxford. If you like and value the work we do and you want to see more, head over to ukreporters.co.uk and support us where you can. Cheers.